Hi everyone, and welcome to my review of FTL, also known as Faster Than Light, released on Steam September 14th, 2012. FTL is a top-down strategy roguelike set in space. Created by two-man developer Subset Games, FTL was considered one of the major successes of Kickstarter, which was able to raise an impressive $200,000 out of a $10,000 goal. As a result, more content was added to the game after its initial release. One of the major bonuses of this excess funding was an updated version of the game called FTL Advanced Edition, which was patched into the game for free. There is an option to enable or disable this added content, but I recommend playing with it enabled, as it expands the game in many ways without diluting the experience. As the game begins, you're informed you are on board a ship carrying vital information for the remains of the Galactic Federation's ailing fleet. The Rebel fleet is in hot pursuit and you must navigate through eight hostile variating sectors of space in order to reach your destination and deliver the information. Each sector is procedurally generated and has different challenges and difficulties as you move through them. The game's combat is in real time and the frequent use of the pause function is essential to managing your crew movement and weapon assignments. Before the game begins you choose a spacecraft and a ship layout. Different craft have different strengths and weaknesses, weapon fittings, crew races and structural arrangements. Although as you progress through the game you can customise the ship the way you like. More craft can be unlocked by conditions such as beating the game a number of times or finding a mysterious item or character on your travels. Each ship has three different layouts which pertain to the physical layout of the ship and its systems. This also includes variations of the weapons you start with. These range from lasers to missiles to ion blasters. There are eight crew race types in FTL. Humans, NG, Mantis, Rockmen, affectionately referred to by my friend I won't name as Rock Pokemon, Zoltan, Slug, Lanius, and Crystal. Some of them must be unlocked through certain requirements, but most are available for hire from the get-go. Each race has different attributes, for example, the little green Zoltan can power the ship's systems by being present in a certain room, whereas the Mantis have lower health and higher attack power for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Each race has its pros and cons, with humans being the more balanced one. You encounter these races as both hostile and friendly enemies as you traverse the sectors of FTL. There are seven sectors to traverse in FTL before the boss, and eight sectors if you include the final area and its boss fight. Each sector contains around 20 beacons, of which the player burns fuel to move around to. This is essentially the bread and butter of the game. You will encounter a range of beacons that have enemy ships lingering in them. Others will have shops, crews in distress that need help, and even slave traders offering to sell you cheap crew members if you're willing to support pure evil. Some zones are more perilous than others. There's alien homeworlds, abandoned sectors, civilian sectors, and even nebula areas which are clouded in dust, slowing down the pursuit of the rebels on your tail. As you progress from point to point on the map, your ship consumes one unit of fuel. Fuel can be regained by destroying enemy spacecraft, making deals with locals, helping a ship in need via a trade, or by purchasing it from the shops you encounter along the way. The same goes for missile ammunition and drone parts which are also a consumable and essential resource you will need to replenish. The shops that do pop up occasionally allow you to repair your hull and buy new systems, augmentations, weapons and crew members for your craft. As you traverse the sectors and hopefully reach the end, you're encountered with a slightly different layout of beacons. There's an allied base in the middle of the map and you must reach it and protect it before the rebel boss ship does. This fight is quite difficult and if you've had a bad run or haven't decked out your ship correctly, this fight can be a nightmare or downright unwinnable. So what's the verdict? In my opinion, FTL is a pretty flawless indie game. Yes, it can be frustratingly hard at times, and yes, there's an element of luck that comes into play that can stuff your game up. But aside from that, I find it hard to be disappointed with. The gameplay is well thought out and well coded. The story is good enough to feel immersed in the world, but not so much that you feel you've got to be trawling through useless bits of lore that have no bearing on the gameplay. Everything has been parcelated into a neat, tight and coherent gameplay experience. Not to mention the potential for replayability. Since it was first released, I found myself coming back time and time again without ever feeling bored. There's plenty of little things to unlock, and the procedural level generation makes each playthrough feel familiar, but also unique and fresh. 
All in all, I would highly recommend picking up FTL if you like this genre of game. It's by far the best of its kind, and pretty flawless in my opinion. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.